Okay, uh, my name is Stefan, and my hobby is 3D printing. So I will speak about 3D printing today at 16.15. And uh, my second hobby is to play with some small computers and connecting those computers to bigger computers or to mobile phones. So I will show you today how you can connect almost every sensor you can imagine to mobile device. So you can collect data from different sensors to mobile device and then so on those data, for example, to the internet. So let's start with some motivation. So do you know what is that? It's a forest fire in Montana. Do you know what that? It's not chemical disaster, it's much better disaster. <laughs> Nuclear disaster, it's Fukushima. <laughs> the chemical disaster. This is floods in Prague three months ago. And this is almost the center of the Prague. It's a small creek. And this is uh, Shanghai. Smog. So definitely, those are you don't want to be there. But we need information what's, what's going there. And this is the right job for some sensors for mobile devices and for the concept of Internet of Things. So for example, the, during the Fukushima disaster, the hackerspace in Tokyo built it mobile Geigelmiller computers. So the small Geigelmiller computer connected to mobile phone and people just went to close to Fukushima nuclear power plant, left the phone there with the Geigelmiller and again go back so they have, everyone had data, but no one has been injured because of some radioactivity. So let's start with Internet of Things. So have you heard this term? Do you know about this? Probably yes, it's quite buzzword now. So the origins are from 1999 from MIT. And at the really origins of Internet of Things, the idea is that you have uniquely identified devices connected to network with the similar structure as internet. It doesn't mean, or in the past, it didn't mean that you connect those devices to internet. It means just connect those devices to some kind of the network with the same principles as internet. Now, Internet of Things is more about connecting some autonomous devices to internet to collect data send those data to internet so everyone can use this data for some research or stuff like that or you really create some kind of the sensor network for example in some inside some manufacturer for example in some power plant so you can collect data what's going in some area and the most typical usage is environmental monitoring so if you, know, if you need to know what's going around you in your living environment, you can use this concept to collect data. So the most popular in the Czech, in Czech Republic, we have a very popular project. This project is heavily used in Ostrava. Maybe you know the Ostrava, it's very close here. And you, maybe you know the Ostrava is an industrial city and there, is, uh, there are a lot of problems with the smoke. So there are a lot of dust particles in the air. And those dust particles are very dangerous, especially for small kids. So we have a project named Canarci, the canary bird, you may, may know, these yellow birds. So there are ladies, when they want to walk outside with small kids, they have some device connected to mobile phone, measuring dust particles, and they know if it's safe to go outside or not. And of course, those data are, pub are publicly available on in the internet, so Again, some lady with the small kids without the real device can look what's going on around the city and maybe there are some places because of wind which are safe and maybe there are some places which are not safe. So this is the practical usage from the Czech Republic now. Very interesting is uh, monitoring of the forest fire. Those, there are big sensor networks in the US monitoring the big areas of the forest because of fire. They are using 
very high-end technologies like uh, thermovision and you know the uh, wireless connectivity using is very strong uh, very strong wireless connectivity to have the online view what's going in the forest and so on so typical users <laughs> we uh, in Czech Republic, I'm cooperating with data journalists. Uh, data journalism is, uh, let's say, new kind of journalist. Those people collecting data from different sources, put those data together and make story around that. So most typical output of data journalists is some map of something, of criminality, for example. So you can look on the map of Prague, where is it safe to be or, or where is it not safe to be. Uh, of course, activists, so this is the ladies from Ostrava, they are using those devices monitoring the air quality to push the government to make something to change this in Ostrava. Of course, the public sector and the student projects. You, you will see some very some simple, very easy projects for students. So, at the beginning, I will speak about microcontrollers, I will speak about sensors, and I will speak about mobile phone later. So let's start with the hardware. So we need some sensors. So do you know what is the sensor on the left top? The, the, bigger, the biggest one. No, the camera is the middle one on the first row. On the left top. This sensor you can find in air condition and it's measuring dust particles. Uh, this is very funny sensor because the units, because the, this sensor is used in the US and the units as the output is the number of dust particles in quadratic feet. <laughs> so really stupid the US in cubic, in cubic feet, sorry. So you can see uh, once the yellow one, the, sorry, the white one, it's a motion sensor, uh, there is a GPS, you can measure almost everything. So you can buy sensor to measure almost everything. It's a just question of money. Of course, if you want to super high precision sensors, you will pay a lot. If you want to measure just temperature, you will pay one euro or less. It costs nothing. But of course, if you want to measure temperatures higher than 1000 degrees, it will cost a lot of money. So let's have a small look to some sensors I have here with me. So, this one is not so interesting. So this is a barometer. So you can measure the pressure and the temperature. This is a very simple thermometer. This is the motion sensor. You may know, probably you know this kind of the sensor from the alarms. And here we have... The simplest sensor button. And here we have uh, this is GPS and so on. So you can really measure the camera, you can really measure almost everything. So just buy the proper sensor and you can start build something. My presentation. Okay. So, so we have sensors now. We need something to collect data from the sensor, and on the end push those data, for example, to your mobile phone. So we need some microcontroller. So some small computer taking data from the sensors and sending data to internet or to some computer or to mobile device. So the microcontroller 
a, sli a small computer. So this is computer. And it can be much more smaller. This size is because of, uh, you know, the case. But it, it can be much more smaller. At least mm -hmm. 10 times smaller. But this one, it's quite powerful. It has six inputs, six outputs. And for example, if you want to just take data about temperature, for example, or from very simple sensors, you can very easily use this one. Or microcontrollers can be, of course, much more bigger and much more powerful. You will see it later. I don't want to lose this one. So, the basic, uh, the biggest advantage of the microcontroller is that on this microcontroller runs only one application, one program. So it's very, very robust solution. So it cannot break because of some stupid driver of graphic card or something like that, because there is a just one program running, nothing more. And you are very close to hardware, so it can be very, very powerful, even if this is very tiny with the low uh, clock speed and so on, with a low memory, but it can be very, very powerful. The problem is that you must know what you are doing. So if you are a standard developer, you are developing for the phones, or you are developing for standard computers, you will be really surprised that it, it is not possible to read to inside the memory some big string because there is not enough memory. We are typically speaking about once of kilobytes memory. Of course, you can have another microcontrollers with, of, with a lot of, of megabytes memory. But the most common one, or very common one, this Pizzaxe, this is this small one, it was the Pizzaxe 8. It has something, you can store something like 20 numbers to memory, nothing more. So you cannot work with the strings and so on, because it has almost no memory. But just take data from different sensor and send it somewhere, it works perfect. And what's really nice on the Pizzaxe, the one I showed you before, the price is... Uh, something about two US dollars. So it costs nothing. So you can do, but you can do a lot of things with that. And let's have a small look. This is a simple application. This is the simple monitor of uh, monitoring of the light. So when do you, when you, this is a very simple project. So if you want to monitor, for example, the quality of the water in some lake, the easiest way how to monitor the quality of the water is to use the light sensor because you can measure how dark water is. So this is a very easy way how to do that. And I'll show you this application live. So uh, this is the light sensor. Uh, this is uh, Pizzaxe 18. So this is the microcontroller. Uh, this is just a transistor array. It's not. A, this is not any in, uh, any smart thing. It's just a array of transistor because of you can uh, you can join here some uh, electric uh, motors and it consumes a lot of power. So you cannot. You need to use this uh, array of the transistors. And this is very simple output just numbers. So if I connect it to battery, so we have a lot of, and we have, so it measures the lights. And even if you have this small microcontroller here, this you can connect to your mobile device. Very easy. You will see it later. So, I lost my presentation again. So, do you know Arduino? Of course, everyone knows Arduino. <laughs> so, from my point of view, I like the system of shields, but I don't like the way how you program Arduino. 
because I don't like this IDE because it's I don't remember anything now because I'm older so I don't remember all commands so I like the IDE which helps you typing code so you know Arduino so Arduino is very very good way to use it because it's cheap and the biggest advantage is a large community so you can if you have any problem you will find very easy solution and it's multi-platform so you can use this on different operating systems and so on I prefer .NET Micro Framework .NET Micro Framework is uh, open source and open hardware platform for microcontrollers it starts as an industrial solution for industry now it's used in industry but for hobbyists too I think the advantages compared to Arduino is uh, it's much more, much more powerful the typical board has tens of kilobytes of memory. It's no problem to have a board with .NET Micro Framework with hundreds of megabytes of memory. We will see some of them. But the problem is it's more expensive than Arduino. Not so much, but it's more expensive. And the community is not so big because it starts as a project for industry, not for hobbyists as Arduino started but it's heavily used in industry. Maybe you have some device running .NET Micro Framework at home because it's quite common, especially if you want, if you need some, if you, want, if you need to use some screens, touch screens and so on. It's very, very easy to use this, much more easy than Arduino, but it's more expensive. So, do you know Raspberry Pi? Perfect. So forget about that. <laughs> it's very very bad solution for collecting data the reason is very simple it consumes too much too much energy so you cannot run it on battery for a long time for example Arduino or microframe pizza it can run on battery for a month for a years if you write the application the right way it's not possible on Raspberry Pi so it needs a lot of energy first problem second one it's a real operating system, so too much things are running on it and too much things can break. Is it possible to write a bare metal application for Raspberry Pi? Uh, sorry? Uh, is it possible to write uh, a bare metal, you know, instead of an, uh, of an operating system? Uh, running co on the chip. Yes, it's possible, of course. Uh, because the, as I know, there is some ARM processor, so you can write application directly for the ARM, and then it will have the same advantages as, other, as Arduino or Micro Framework, and so of course it's possible. So you will see one board, uh, later you will see one board, which is very similar to Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi is, uh, let's say, good central point of some sensor network, but it's the very, very bad idea to use it to directly collect the data. We have very bad experience with that from one project and you will see about this project later to, uh, later in my speech. So, demo. Let's have a look to different boards. So I start with Arduino because you know Arduino. This is probably the cheapest one. It's uh, Arduino Leo. Arduino Leo is, uh, from my opinion, is the best solution for the beginners because uh, it uh, works a uh, little different than the Arduino Dumelove, the, the standard one. I will speak about this advantage later today. And it's really cheap. Do you know this Arduino? Maybe not. It's Arduino Fio. And this is, uh, it's, it's really designed to be an endpoint of some sensor network because here you can directly touch the wireless module based on Zigbee protocol. I will speak about Zigbee again later today. And this is big one. It's Arduino Mega. It has quite a lot of memory. And some board with .NET Micro Framework. You can see it's Arduino compatible and are, it's a Fest Panda. 
It's a very good board and very cheap. The price is around 400 Czech crowns, uh, 20 US dollars. So it's very, it's quite cheap, and it's really much more powerful compared to Leonardo. You can see you have a SD card here, a lot of ports, and so on. It's a really good board, but they stopped the production. Uh, the production of this board is stopped uh, because there are some new. Here you can see another board. Another board, another board. This one is open hardware. Here you can see some uh, industry computer on the back. And this style, this connectors is named the uh, .NET Gadgeteer. .NET Gadgeteer is a solution for rapid prototyping and for schools. And the question you had. This is a really powerful board. It had 256 uh, megabytes of memory. It runs very powerful ARM Cortex processor. And here you can change the operating system to Linux, or you can write directly on the chip, or you can use .NET Micro Framework as an operating system. So it's, it's pro this is produced in uh, Czech Republic, but this board is quite expensive. The price is uh, almost 200 US dollars. So it's really expensive but it's for industry. So. Okay. So if you want to collect some data, so it's really not a good idea to connect to internet everything. So sometimes it's better to create some independent network with one central point, and from the central point, send the data somewhere. To mobile device, to standard computer, and so Why? Internet connectivity costs money and energy, a lot of energy. And imagine you need to, for example, you need to cover big forest, so you cannot change the battery every day. So it's better to use some solution with a low power consumption wireless network. For example, used a Zigbee protocol. So Zigbee is industry standard for wireless networks. And using those Zigbee protocol and Zigbee devices, you can create a sensor network with the same functionality as internet. So for example, if some, net, some node doesn't work, it can route another way to really get the information where you need. So, let's make a simple sensor network. So I need, I need uh, this. I need wireless module. So this is the most popular wireless module, XB, running uh, using the Zigbee protocol. And this module is interesting that you just change these modules and it can communicate up to 80 kilometers, 80. Of course, with the big antenna, a lot of power, but it can work. This one works 40 meters. And with, if you have one with the small antenna, it works around two kilometers. So it's quite nice. So uh, this one, and I sorry, I need to reconnect it here. Uh, so it goes here. This one goes here. And we need some sensors. So, here. You know, this uh, .NET Gadgeteer style, this is those one. It's a product of uh, Microsoft Research. 
and it's for people like me because I don't understand the electronics. Okay, and I need power. Okay, so we have 24 degrees now and quite nice temperature, uh, pressure, you see it? So, and if I go back and if I run uh, this application I didn't do any mistake so you can see uh, this error means uh, I'm, I don't have uh, internet connectivity so I'm, I cannot send the data outside my computer now but you can see the same numbers the same temperature same pressure as here and I'm connecting connected using this and it's very funny because it works as a standard serial port so if you if you look to source code here You can see I am using the I am using just serial port. And remember serial port because it will be very important for us today. What about those networks? If you build a network, uh, how do you know which sensor uh, send uh, because ser serial port uh, serial port okay. is point to point. Yes. So uh this is the, the, the basic solution of the ZigBee is that you use the, it works like a wireless serial port and really use the serial communication. You can switch it to API mode. So you are really sending some kind of the data, some packet and inside the packet, there are some identification numbers. So every, uh, every single, this one has a unique address and you can get this unique address from the communication. This is one solution. The second one is that you use some microcontroller between the sensor and this wireless stuff and you can you just write a program and you add your information inside that communication. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of things about the Zigbee uh, wireless networks. It's really interesting for example, it works perfect up to 10 modes, uh, up to 10 nodes. If you have more than 10 nodes, it's not a good idea to use this serial communication because of the routing. So then you need to switch this API communication and then you directly can say, okay, communicate with that node and it, fi it finds much faster the route, for example. If, if some node is disconnected, connected, it's absolutely transparent. So it's a really brilliant uh, protocol, the Zigbee. And all this uh, network, uh, network configuration stuff happens uh, on this module? Yes. Okay. Uh, you are using 80 commands to configure it. Sure. About 80 commands I will speak today. So, I show you a lot of things. So why to use the mobile phone? What is the reason? The first sometimes you need to have a really mobile solution. So you have some sensors and you move with those sensors or the sensors are, for example, one day you have the sensors on that factory, then you need to put this to another factory and so on. So you need to create some mobile solution. So for example, the ladies in Ostrava, they are using those solution, those uh, sensors measuring the dust particles connected to mobile phone because they are moving in the city, they are walking with the kids, they see the current situation and then they are sending the information to the internet. So they are moving. Mobile phones, they have huge perfor performance. So I have seen the, it's no problem to have the, the mobile phone with the quad core. So it's much more powerful than my first computer. Internet connectivity, GPS, GPS modules are quite expensive. Very interesting thing and very important one is the real-time clock. Any device 
you, sh you, s you have seen. It doesn't have real-time clock, so if you need to know the time, you need to set up the time every time again you start this device because there is no backup battery or you need to have some external device real-time clock with the backup battery okay and of course the Bluetooth and the Bluetooth is very interesting for us because the Bluetooth works on any platform and this Bluetooth can work as a serial port so you can very easy using the Bluetooth you can connect any device to your mobile phone using the Bluetooth because the serial communication is really really simple you will see it so what about Bluetooth hardware so I have a lot of Bluetooth hardware but I don't know where So, this is the Bluetooth module. Here, I don't know if you can see it. Here you have TX RX, so the serial port. So it works like a serial port. Uh, do you remember the Zigbee module? This is the Zigbee module but it doesn't use the Zigbee communication protocol it uses a Bluetooth so if you change this module here one to one it will work because it's a just serial port nothing more and as I taught you, you these uh, modules you can configure because it sits on the serial port it's like an old modem from the ancient time of the computers. So you are configuring those modules using AT commands. So here is a very small piece of the code. You will see it in action later today. And if you look here, just SP is some um, serial port somewhere here see the serial port and here you have some commands so maybe you will understand this is the name of the Bluetooth device this is a pin automatic reconnection this one is really interesting it means listen for the connection so everything is configured through 80 commands very easy so we have some Bluetooth hardware then we need to use the Bluetooth on uh, microcontroller together with the microcontroller it's most typical so microcontroller takes data from the sensors and sends the data to serial port and on serial port you can have the Zigbee module or Bluetooth module or real computer it's a serial communications simple but uh, it's not so easy with the microcontrollers typical microcontroller for example Pizzaxe has only one hardware serial port and this serial port is used for programming so when you are sending data or sorry data if when you are you want to send the, your new program to Arduino or to Pizzaxe, it goes through the serial port. So this serial port sometimes is occupied by a computer sending a new program. So what is typical, you need to connect and disconnect the Bluetooth module, for example. So disconnect Bluetooth module, send, write the new program and connect it again. And it's sometimes tricky. So, if you want to use Pizzaxe, it's a good idea to use this, uh, not this, the really small one with the eight pins, 
because this one has just one serial port. You can buy um, some more expensive, so for example, not for $3, but for $5, and it will have much more serial ports. Arduino, the basic Arduino, only one hardware serial port. There is a solution for software serial port, but Leonardo doesn't use serial port for programming. It uses this USB. And you have one free hardware serial port here. So this is the reason why to use this Leonardo, because you have one real serial port free. And even if you want to program the, uh, you want to pro send the new software to uh, your uh, board. Could you have, for, for example, on Arduino, you've got that uh, in circuit programming uh, connector? Yes, but you know, it, you need to do something more. So I think it's much easier to do this one because you don't need to do anything it, and it works. The only problem can be if you have some, uh, if you have some uh, application and if you look to source code, so to some source code. Here you can see I'm using this serial one because this is this real hardware. If you want to use, uh, so sometimes you, some application you use just serial object and it will not work on a level, Arduino Leonardo because you have to use serial one. Or you can use some, for example, Arduino Mega. Arduino Mega, it has uh, four serial ports and almost all boards with .NET Micro Framework, they have at least four serial ports, the real one, not just some, uh, some software simulation. So, very easy. If you want to use serial port in .NET Micro Framework, you have just object, some basic setup, and it can be event driven, so you can register for the event some serial communication, some income serial communication, and then you can read from serial port what you need. Uh, you can see it reads from serial port here. And this data you can exchange between any two devices with the serial port availability. Bluetooth, ZigBee, direct connection with the cable. So, and some real usage. This is our project from uh, Czech. I did it for uh, one uh, online magazine for some data journalists. So we did the measure because we have big reconstruction of uh, our biggest highway D1. And uh, before the reconstruction started, we did some measurements using the mobile phone and some external sensors. And after the reconstruction will be finished, we will do the same. So we can compare if something changed. So what we did, uh, we measured the noise using the noise sensor, this one, and using the vibration. So I, we used the accelerometer inside the uh, inside uh, inside mobile phone and here you can see the visualization on the map the the top one is the vibration the bottom one is a noise so you can see if we have big vibrations here I have a bigger noise here so it you can see it very very uh, very very easy so how it works so I start my device here So, 
So here you can see uh, this is some just uh, some uh, diode just showing me what's going on. This is a noise sensor. It's not a microphone. It's a real noise sensor. The output is in decibels. Here is a microcontroller and some connectivity. And this is a Bluetooth module connected to serial port. And if I run my up here. Bluetooth. I start it. So here you can see it changed here. So I'm connected now. You can see this symbol of uh, you know the Bluetooth. I'm connected, and when this start be read, it sends data here. And here you can see the readings from the noise sensor. So if I make some noise here, the numbers should be higher. It's 47, it goes to 23, stretch. Okay. And you can collect this data because I have the internet connectivity. I can send it directly to the internet so everyone can use it. So these data are publicly available if you are interested about that. So. Of course, uh, it really depends what kind of uh, mobile phone uh, you have. So if I show you some uh, source code. So I'm using the Windows phone. And there is one object representing uh, Bluetooth devices. So you have object named uh, peer finder. The peer finder can you look for the Bluetooth devices. What's important if you want to communicate device, mobile phone, it, those devices have to be paired. So if I go to my settings here, So this uh, RNBT is module, data logger is a module, and again RN42 is uh, some module. So it must be paired before. And then you can establish connectivity. Uh, it's not so, you know, it's not really, it's not really so easy here. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, you will work on the socket level. So you will really work on the very low level of the communication. So it's not on the phone side, it doesn't look like a serial port. It looks like just a socket connection. And you need to read the data from the socket connection and write the data to socket connection. But on the device side, it's a standard serial port. So, and the last thing I want to show you is a GPRS module. So mobile phone, in different case. So this is a mobile phone. You can connect here speaker, microphone, you have antenna here. On the bottom is a SIM card inside. And if you write uh, some software around, you can build your own mobile phone with just this very simple uh, module. If you want to use uh, these modules for some, you know, data collection and so on, just be careful on one thing: it can consume a lot of a lot of power. So you need a very strong battery. It can take up to two amperes. Two amperes is a lot. You need to cool it because it makes a lot of heat. So it's not so user friendly, but. It's you can do with this a uh, lot of funny stuff. So let's look to some source code again. So I need battery. 
I need an antenna. And I hope I will not destroy everything. It's really a bad idea to connect it just to USB port. You need external power. So first this, then this. And something is wrong. So, so we are looking for connectivity. I, I, I hope the SIM card will work here, because it's uh, from Czech, and I'm not, think, I'm not sure about the roaming. It takes some time, so we are still looking for network. Never mind. Let's go to source code. It's much more fun. As a standard serial device, you are working with uh, 80 commands. Still not, still nothing. So you are waiting. We are, we have serial commands. It's uh, funny; those serial commands are standardized. So there is a standard for 80 commands working with uh, GSM modules. So for example, if you want to send SMS, it looks like this. We are working in text mode and we want to send SMS to some number. Then you write some texts and everything you are sending to serial port. So here we are. So I try to send SMS. Okay, so so sending starting the application, deploying successful, restarting everything, rebooting. So waiting, here we are, and you can see, we can't. you can't, sorry, because I'm working with my pen, you know, and here you can see, this is my SMS, I send a test message, and here you can see, is this test or we can smart def gone no and what's nice this module I'm using the this uh, GSM module I have here is very interesting there is a, a chip uh, named sim 900 and this chip has support for FTP and HTTP. So you can very easy, if you want to communicate with some web server or so on, it's very easy. So you have special commands like open the web page, read from the web page, and so on. So it's very easy to use. Uh, there are another, another chip uh, then uh, which doesn't have this support. So then you need to really work on TCP IP level. So it's not so easy. This one works perfect and the price is not so big. It's uh, around 60 US dollars. It's not so high price. And here you can see really smart 
def con. You cannot see it. Stupid colors. But it works. Okay. So and this is end of my presentation. And I'm ready for your questions. Or if you want to see my devices, just come here, look on it. It's no problem. Some questions? Is it possible to get uh, audio data from the module stream to the microcontroller? Or yes, the yes, it's possible. But uh, you will do. You need. You cannot do it directly. So you need to connect the output to some device to some sensor taking data from audio data and send it back to microcontroller. So you need a, a analog to digital yes. converter? Yes. No, I, yeah. <laughs> you need to convert this because here is analog output and you need to convert to digital because as I know there is no direct access to the stream. I was hoping for, for the direct access. No, it's not. As I know it is not possible. Or, okay, this module doesn't, uh, okay. If you use this module and connect it a different way, it should be possible. But, but not, not on this uh, board. Not, not on this board. No, sure. This is not possible. But you can buy this module uh, as a separate product. So some more questions? And it, really, it can really work like a mobile phone because do you recognize this? But you are too young, I mm -hmm. think. Do you know what is this? Do you remember? Do you? Fifty-one ten. <laughs> the the price of this uh, display is like four US dollars, and you can you can connect it directly here, so you can really make your own mobile phone. You know this. So everyone has device like that. Device like that. With this battery. <laughs> okay, some more questions? Okay, if you don't have any questions, I think my time is almost over, so I will pack it back, so before everything will be back in my box. Enjoy it and look at it. Okay, thank you. <laughs>